الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهديه الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا تجد له وليا مرشدا وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا يا أيها الذين آمروا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله تعالى وخير هدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور متثاتها وكل محدثة بدع وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار we praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a blessed praise. We send peace and blessings upon our beloved messenger Muhammad mm-hmm. sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, upon his family, his companions, and those who followed him until the end of time. There's a very important point in the story of Adam and his wife. While Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that he equipped Adam and his wife eventually with the ability to name things. And for obvious reasons, but one of the more important reasons is that when we're able to name something, we're able to remember it. We're able to apply an image to it. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has the best names and the best attributes. Allah says in the Quran that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has the most honorable names. So call him, invoke him, pray to him, supplicate to him by his names. And more importantly, the ability to use our minds to remember things cognitively, to apply imagery to certain things motivates us either to act in support of something or against something. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent prophets and those prophets, a third of the Quran actually is stories. The Quran says to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, remind them of the days of Allah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, bihi Like we sent these stories to you, O Muhammad alayhi salatu salam, to strengthen you, to give you a sense of resolve. That's why Imam Junaid used to say, that the stories of the prophets and the righteous are soldiers of God. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses to strengthen, alhamdulillah, our hearts and our minds to give us understanding. Further, the Quran builds on this idea of remembering in order to recognize. We say, Al-Dhikr qabal al-Fikr. Wal-Fikr qabal al-Amal. We say that to remember precedes think like to, to think comes after remembering. So I remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then I think about things. And then that leads to action. So I would say, الذكر قبر العمل عملان. Like to make dhikr before you act is actually two actions. Today we want to talk about the importance of recognizing blessings. And in the second short khutbah, inshallah, some very important, important blessings we should be paying attention to that most people tend to ignore. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the 12th verse of Surah Al-Talaq, 
He says, Allahu alladhi khalaqa sab'a samawati wa min al-ardi mithlahunna yatanazzalu al-amu bainahunna li ta'lamu anna allaha ala kulli shay'in qadir wa anna allaha qad ahata bi kulli shay'in ilma. Subhanallah. In this chapter, before this verse, Allah's name is mentioned 33 times. So that's why it doesn't start if you speak Arabic. It doesn't say, Hu Allahu ladhi khalaqa sab'a samawati wa min al It just says, Allahu. It's like after 33 times, if you don't know who I am, just get out of the way. Allah. After everything that's been talked about, وَمَن يَتَّقِ اللَّهَ يَجَعَلْ لَهُمْ مَخْرَجًا وَاتَّقِ اللَّهُ رَبَّكُمْ Over and over in the chapter, it's like if you haven't got it by now, so that's why it starts here, and this is rhetoric, Balagha. Allahu الَّذِي خَلَقَ سَبَعَ samawat. This is who I am. It says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created seven heavens. And there's a problem in the translation here. I have not seen this translated correctly. This is not, I'm not trying to take shots at anybody. I don't like that, but translation is hard. And even most, unfortunately, Arabs, they're very weak in language. They may be able to speak and follow Amr Diyab, but they can't find Abu Amr al-Basr. Those are two different Amrs. But subhanAllah, many people think, oh, seven heavens and seven earths. So I have sometimes Muslims contact me. I even put a TikTok about this up today. And they're like, there's not seven earths. And sometimes we see people who are the enemies of Islam attacking the Quran and saying the Quran says there are seven earths. But in Arabic, there's something actually really amazing happening here, man. It's called taqdim wa in balava where sometimes in Arabic, you can change the proper order of the grammar to throw off the reader. So for example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, حَتَّى يَأْتِي أَحَدَكُمْ الْمَوْتُ Let's say, يَأْتِي الْمَوْتُ أَحَدَكُمْ إِذْ كُنْتُمْ شُهَدَاءَ إِذْ حَذْرَ يَعْقُوبَ الْمَوْتُ It says, when death comes to you, but actually in Arabic, it's when you, death comes. As if to remind us, like, none of us can escape death. No one. So the object, I know I don't want to put too much on you guys. I know it's a lot going on in school. But the object comes before the subject. To mess with people. To mess with the reader. So the Arabs were like, what's this? So there's a mantuq and a mafhum. There's what's read and there's what's understood. What's understood is, death is important. And none of you, me, can escape it. This is like the beauty of the Quran. That's why Imam al-Razi, he said the Quran is bigger than Arabic. It's beyond it. Because the ummah of the Prophet ﷺ is made up of everybody, alhamdulillah. That's what's happening in this verse. Allahu ladhi khalaqa sab'a samawatin. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created seven heavens and seven, if you read it this way, Allahu ladhi khalaqa sab'a samawatin wa min al-ardi mislahun. Seven heavens and similarly seven earths. That's how if you read it that way without rhetoric, that's what it means. But this is called taqdeem and taqheer. Actually it means wa mislahunna al-ard. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created seven heavens and similarly he created the earth. That's why if you think about it, earth is not plural. It's still singular. People will say, this is hard. Prophecy is hard, bro. Nobody complains about binge watching their favorite show or like finding the latest codes or trying to get it. And you know, an NFT next to Snoop Dogg. Nobody has a problem working for that. But when it comes to religion, man, religion is hard, bro. What were you doing last night? Dude, last night I ordered cheese pizza, right? And I finished the whole new Call of Duty in six and a half hours straight, bro. I didn't even answer my mom's phone calls, bro. But religion's hard. No, no, no. We are hard. We are hard. We're hard on ourselves. So Allah says, and I don't want to give a dad khutbah, I'm sorry. Everybody looks scared. It's okay. I'm talking to myself too. 
I got that new Call of Duty. So the meaning is, but then the question is like, why? This goes back to the point we talked about earlier. Why does it happen in the Quran? Like why sometimes does it bring things in front of the other to try to mess with the reader, to show us the importance of things, to show us the sacredness of the earth, man. And for those of you involved in like environmental justice, Here's a verse for you that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala exclusively shines the light of the Quran on the earth to teach us the following. Number one, this is our home. This is a blessing. We see people around us, subhanAllah, they don't have homes, man. I was in front of a masjid a few weeks ago. This brother came to me and he could speak Arabic. He wasn't Arab. And we started talking, and then he said, can you help me? I said, maybe, like, what's wrong? He put it on, that brother had no shoes on, man. So we went to Burlington on 125th. And the lady there was like, oh, here he comes again. This guy always asking for shoes. I said, well, let's give him some shoes. People don't have a place. And we see people struggling sometimes in the subway, and people make fun of them, man. But let's remember that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he gave us all a home. That's why someone came to Ibrahim ibn Adham. He said, I'm young. I can't stop doing bad. He said, okay, evict yourself from the house Allah gave you. He said, what? He said, yeah, leave the earth. He said, there's no other place to live. He said, then how can you disobey your landlord? We all follow the rules of our landlord, most of us. The second thing is that we have a responsibility here. I made you responsible here. The third is environmental justice, not to abuse the earth. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talked about Fir'aun, he said, فَمَا بَكَتْ عَرِيهِمُ السَّمَاءُ وَالْأَرْضِ Even the heavens and the skies didn't weep for them. One of my teachers told me because they didn't know how to treat the earth. They didn't know how to treat the environment. And finally, to remind us in general of the importance of this blessing. Allah has made this so you will know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created everything and he is in control of all things. That nothing escapes his knowledge. So in this first part of this khutbah, we see subhanAllah, the depth and beauty of the Quran, this ocean, alhamdulillah, of beauty. And how if the Ummah neglects the Qur'an, the Qur'an will continue. Like it will continue. Allah will bring people to replace us. We'll be the ones who suffer. Allah says, I'll replace you. And that we are neglecting fulfilling our responsibility to teach the world and to guide them to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. بأسك الله سبحانه وتعالى يثبتنا وإياكم أقول قولي هذا أستغفر الله لي ولكم فاستغفروا إنه هو الغفور الرحيم اللهم صل وسلم بسم الله الحمد لله لا أبغي به بدل الحمد لله بلغم رضوانه الأمل ثم الصلاة على خير الورى وعلى ساداتنا آله وصحبه الفضلاء. We praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We send peace and blessings upon our beloved messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us good in this life and the next. And ask Allah to facilitate inshallah all things that may be difficult for us in our relationship with him, with others, our professional lives as well as our academic lives. In the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does this on numerous occasions, what we talked about earlier, mentions things for us to pay attention to them in different ways. So, for example, he says, Like in yourself, there are these kind of signs, these important indicators that there is something greater to all this than just James Harden from Ben Simmons. 
There's something greater to all this. Those things are nice. Don't get me wrong. I know about it. I followed it. As a Celtics fan, I'm happy. But it shouldn't consume me. It shouldn't be what, what occupies me. It shouldn't be driving me. The, the, the secondary should not become what drives me intrinsically. That's Zuhud. And also in other ways, specifically the Prophet وسلم, because there's a study that came out recently in the journal of psychiatric health that when people have more choices, they actually become more unhappy, subhanAllah. People are trying to understand the phenomena of, you know, when I grew up, we had five television channels. Now it's like 500 television channels. Like people have more, then why do we see a rise in depression and sadness, lack of self-worth? The idea is, is that when you give people more choices, they actually become more depressed, more frustrated. So out of his mercy, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent prophets to help identify for us what's important. Like, if I'm really, really looking at this life as a journey back to Allah, and I'm trying to appreciate blessings, then I have to do a few things. Number one is I have to learn religious nomenclature, specifically Quranic understandings of life. For example, capitalism frames life as valued on what you have. Communism values life on what's good for everybody, but really not. Islam values life from the perspective of what is going to last forever. And that's only Allah. It's very different. These are fundamental challenges to how we look at the world. Al-wujud will come will kaif. So the first is I have to educate myself. And I have to maybe review what education means to me. Is it getting my ear pulled in Sunday school? Is it being questioned because of my gender or my color, my social economic status? These people are not religious teachers. These people are friends of shaitan. That's how we should locate them in our lives. And then re-engage studying religion in a way that's much more restorative. We need restorative religion for many Muslims. And then get to a point where my, my basis is Allah and everything else is secondary. That's why Imam Ibn Al-Ta'Allah, he says something so nice in the hikam. He said, Shaitan bayna man yastadillu bihi wa yastadillu alayhi. He said, there's a big difference between the person who uses Allah to evidence creation and uses creation to evidence Allah. SubhanAllah, it's a very different way of thinking. That the one who looks at the world from Tawheed, the lens of Tawheed, Ihsan, to worship Allah as though I see him, who locates everything around us vis-a-vis -vis Tawheed, is the one who has the Haqq. But the one that has to reflect the world on God, which can become a subtle form of idolatry, by the way. Because now is being, God is being edited in my mind through the world. Instead of looking at the world through the lens of God. He said, Because that person hasn't really arrived to that ma'rifah. Then he says something amazing. And if that's the case, when has God been absent that someone needs to prove him? It's the opposite. And when has it been far from you that you need the world around you to prove him? So here we see a higher level of consciousness within Islam. And a higher level of what our classic scholars used as a terminology, al-yaqaba, being woke. This is 800 years ago. But they were talking about where someone is able to look through the world Look at the world through the lens of the light, not shine the world on Allah and understand Allah. An example, why do all these bad things happen? God hates me. That's not what Islam says. Allah is rewarding you. So now I'm shining the world onto God instead of shining God onto the world. This is what he means here. And that takes us away from appreciating blessings. And that's what we see along with COVID-19, the other pandemic that has to be acknowledged is cynicism. 
Nobody trusts anybody anymore. We won't even know somebody, but we'll immediately look at them in a certain way without even knowing the content of what's in the box, in the ingredients. So he sent the Prophet ﷺ to allow us to achieve that higher level of consciousness. Well, we're above the ratchetness and the sewage of the negative cultures that we see around us. And we look at the world through be careful of the inside of the believer because he or she looks with the light of God. And as the Prophet said, How do I do that? I have to learn religious nomenclature. If I don't learn religious nomenclature, I will be like Adam and Eve if I didn't have the names of all things. I'll be lost in building. So Allah sent the Quran and sent the Prophet وسلمه, to identify for us what is it, like for example, the earth. What is it that I need to be focused on and not get caught up in side stuff? This happens all the time. So the Prophet وسلمه, in one hadith, I'm going to end. I don't have the lungs of Khalid, mashallah. I don't know how he does it. And I cannot do a 25 minute dua. Although it's nice. I like to say I mean. Especially with a mask on at 49. But subhanAllah, the Prophet said, Khud. another narration, Ikhtinam <laughs> means to take the spoils of war. So immediately, the point of nomenclature, I understand religiously, man, I'm at war, dude. Not, of course, let's be careful here. Physical war, we're talking about the war of the nafs, the war to stay away from haram the war to control myself, that we all, I, all of us struggle with this. Nobody's above this. If you find any religious leader, people telling you this person this doesn't have any challenges, run. Run as fast as you can. That's a dangerous sign. Because the Prophet said, Kulu bani adam khata. We all make mistakes. Me, you, everybody. We're on the same boat. But the idea here, the language is powerful. Khtanim khamsa qabala khamsa. Meaning that in the battle between halal and haram, the battle between the heavens and the earth, to be a better person, there are five spoils that you can find in these moments that you can really like hit great rewards and blessings. What's the first one? Shababak qabara haram. Your youth before you get old. Your youth before you get old, this is an opposition to a society that has commodified you and has relegated the wisdom of the elders to something which is detestable and nobody wants to hear. That's why people are in struggle, man. <clears throat> old people have a lot to offer us. Sometimes they can be a little bit, you know, I know, a little bit too much on the supervisor tip, but there's something there. But <clears throat> from Lilo to Stitch, from Harry Potter, you've been programmed. Your mind has been programmed to think old people are stupid. From Steve Urkel, my era, old people have nothing to offer. But if you go to the Muslim world, especially if you go to the village, can't say nothing about old people. Those old people have a lot to offer. And I can say this at my age now. My grandparents are gone. I'm like, man, I wish. You know, I could go talk to them about history, man, who, where we came from, Ireland, what happened. They're gone. But take from your youth. Utilize it now. Don't say to yourself, you know, one day I'll be better, inshallah. You know, when I get old at 26, right, I'll be old at 26 years old, then I'll change. Don't think that way. Do it now. Try to work and become incrementally better. Me too. The second thing that the prophet said we should focus on out of all the blessings in the earth after our youth is sihatak qabra saqanik, is your health before you become ill. We have a lot of people we know, even young people who have been afflicted with certain illnesses. We pray Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give them shifa. The third, your wealth before you come poor. The Prophet said the best wealth is the one that you give in charity when you have money. Not caught up in it. I'm not caught up in it. 
The next he said, use your free time before you get busy. When I was in college, I was like, yo, when I get that job as a teacher making $24,000 a year, I'm getting paid. But I have great benefits. I'm going to have so much free time. That's what I thought. But then subhanAllah became like a hip hop album, Babies and Bills. <laughs> I was like, what happened to that free time? I thought I was going to have, I memorized the Quran in college. I said, there's no way I could have memorized the Quran outside of it. So don't like think, oh man, right now I'm busy, I'm busy, I'm busy, I'm busy. One day the clouds will break. It just becomes more and more responsibility, and especially as our relatives get older, they start to rely on us. If we have relatives overseas, they start to rely. So we actually become more occupied, which is okay. And then finally, he said, take from your life before you die. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to appreciate the blessings, especially the blessings of this earth that he's created, which is under siege, man. SubhanAllah. And then to realize that we have a responsibility that the earth to akhbariha. The earth is gonna talk about what went down here. So that we realize we use it and respect it and honor it, and we're careful that we're not harming it, which is also harming community across the globe. And then we realize the blessings of the Prophet and identifying these five, mashallah, very important things. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by all of his names and attributes to bless our brother Ayman. Alhamdulillah, I was able to talk to him uh, a week ago. It's like I saw a miracle on FaceTime. Alhamdulillah. We ask Allah to continue to cure him and allow his, his you know, rejuvenation to be a reminder for us to utilize whatever blessings we still have in our health. Allah is a blessing, man. I saw him on the phone. I was like, Allah, bro. It's like I'm seeing a ghost, man. It's like, I'm not a ghost. The same power. Right? I'm, I'm, I'm not Tommy. I'm not ghost, but subhanAllah, like to talk to him and see him and just to see his smile, to appreciate life, the blessing of being alive, man. How do we use this na'ma that Allah has given us? We ask Allah to bless all of you. We have a lot of love for you. We have a lot of warm feelings for all of you that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, any fears that you have, anxieties will be removed from you, inshallah that you'll be truly successful in whatever you seek to put in front of you. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make your generation a generation of transformation that will heal the fractured world and remedy so many of the faith-based challenges as well as social, political, economic challenges that the world is doing. We ask Allah for anyone who may be having trouble with their parents. Right now, my father and I, we going at it. It's like a celebrity death match. So may, and he's 82. You can't tell an 82 year old man anything, right? You're like, it's sunny outside. No, it's not. Okay. <laughs> That's the sun. No, it's not. May Allah bless him with hidayah, right? But bless all of us as we struggle to navigate the rapids of parents, right? It can be challenging. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bring ease and khair into that relationship. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help you if you have any professors that are really successful trolls. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you're not my class, right? you said I mean. So we ask Allah to make that easy for you, inshallah, to facilitate your education. For those of us who may be missing our families, my wife and daughter are in DC, and some of you, your parents and family are like overseas. So you experience a tremendous amount of loneliness, it's normal. We miss them and FaceTime can only do so much. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bring you back together, inshallah. We okay. ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect our iman. We ask Allah to help us if we're struggling with things that Allah is not pleased with, to facilitate and give us the strength. Sometimes standing up against evil just needs some bravery. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us that bravery. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to unite us with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that we get to see his face. He will be smiling at us. عليه الصلاة والسلام ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون والسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين